Guys, I hate to break it to you, but hackers are getting more sophisticated every year. Luckily, you can get protection from NordVPN with a single click. I am a loyal NordVPN customer, and with the fastest VPN on the planet, I never have to slow down because of my connection. But NordVPN is more than your standard VPN. You can stay safe with threat protection, which shields you from malware, trackers, and ads. Now, with NordPass Password Manager, they can make your digital life simpler by keeping your password close at hand. And with the premium feature, the Data Breach Scanner, NordVPN will scan the internet and make sure your sensitive data has not leaked. Now you can purchase both NordPass and NordVPN at the same checkout. One account protects up to six devices and with a 24 seven customer support, their advanced software is unbeatable. Try NordVPN risk-free with a 30 day money back guarantee. Go to nordvpn.com slash sudden. And to commemorate NordVPN's 11th birthday, you're going to get a mystery gift. Or just click on the link below. Oh my gosh, guys, you wouldn't believe what it's like over here. I can't even get any rest. My phone will not quit going off. And I get alerts. I get buzzes for text messages and for emails. It will not stop. It's Sergei Pavlich and Sergei Pavlich's team. I mean, I'm talking about his manager. I'm talking about his mom. I'm talking about his teammates. Anyone that's ever known, he's calling every goddamn favor. He's begging me. He's begging me if he can come on and if I'll set up a Zoom, of which I will do for him. No, I'm, I'm teasing. Of course, I have not heard from him at all, and neither has anybody. And it is shocking. It is truly the most shocking part of the weekend. And a very apropos, by the way. Sergey has done nothing out of line here. He's done nothing that the other heavyweights haven't done. To watch that division fail the way that it's failing. So Sergey Pavlov, just so you understand, perfectly good fighter, by the way. He was one, one failed COVID test away from fighting for the strap. He was one missed way in away from fighting for the strap. He was one picogram away from fighting for the strap. He was there. He was live. He was in attendance. He was booked. He was paid. Did you understand that? Do you understand that? You understand if everybody that was paid for their participation on Saturday night, there was a check written to Sergey Pavlovich. Let me ask you a question. Are you aware that his paperwork and licensing was done? That means there's a full training camp. So all your coaches and all your trainers and everybody that gets flat and all the damn money that Dana White's got to write checks for just in case that COVID test, that extra pound or that picogram shows up. Nobody said his name. I haven't heard his name. As a matter of fact, I got an interesting detail, which I knew, I just, I forgot it, which is that Sergi's already booked to fight Curtis Blades. Now, I knew that. But that's interesting. I'd have made a big deal of that. And I remembered that I would have made a big deal about this last week. I would have just told you something along, along the lines of I've never seen a backup fighter. I've never seen a backup fighter that was booked in a main event, but was brought in for this. You can understand the peaking, right? Now, a lot of this is BS, I'm well aware, but it's still a belief phenomenon within our sport that you peak, that you have a date, that it's important that when you have the date. Very relevant. I mean, yes, Surreal Garn come out a week ago and say, I didn't have enough time to prepare specifically for John Jones. I would have liked the longer training camp. No problem, but he came out and he said, we all kind of look back and go, man, this guy's been out for three years and he's a different weight class. You've been fighting consistently, but you, it was just a weird statement. So these guys like to peak, they like to have time. So being in, in Sergey Pavlovich's spot, he's booked in a main event against Curtis Blades, which by the X's and O's, man, that Curtis Blades is a problem. He's booked in a five-round main event against Curtis at a set and established date. And then he gets a call somewhere along the way. Hey, can you also be ready here? And just so you understand, Sergi, we, we want you ready here. We're not going to know until one day before who your opponent's going to be. A former professional kickboxer or a former junior college national champion wrestler. Could you imagine being Sergi? Um, and, and by the way, Sergi, if you get put in, win or lose, your fight with Curtis is off. Forget about that whole thing. I'm I just sharing for you guys. Do you know that's how it works? That's kind of tough. 
I actually found that out the hard way. I found that out as a competitor. I had a fight booked in Portland, Oregon, which is my hometown, right? Could you imagine? A fight in my hometown would have been really exciting for me. I had a fight booked and I got called to do a short notice. I got called on a favor. Chael, can you do us a favor? Can you come out and fight Dan Miller? 20 days. And I said, yes. And I will tell you from a greedy standpoint, I thought I was getting two paychecks. I'm going to go out and fight Miller. And whatever happens there, I'm going to come back and I'm going to fight in my hometown, which I'm pumped for once in a lifetime opportunity. Really exciting thing for me. So I say, yes, I do the Miller fight. And then, they, I, and then, and then I find out. They go, no, of course your, your fight that you've already agreed to in Portland is off. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Why would it be off? Why would it be off? Now, I haven't gotten anything. I had one, and now you gave me one. I, I was One I was going to get prepared for, and now one I don't get to prepare for. Like I'm, I'm dead even. I have to have them both, or you're the only one getting a deal here. Where's the, where's the favor for me? So I only share with you, but that's the way it worked. And I didn't fight at home, and I found out that that's just the way it works. That's been very standard for everybody, but this is the day that I learned it. So imagine that from Sergi's standpoint. That's a lot. We made a big deal about that, weren't we, guys? Sergi Pavlich was willing to fight Gone or Jones on 24 hours notice. Man, that's cool. Sergi Pavlich had to peak. Not knowing if he was going to be active. Now he's got to go back, fly back wherever he lives, wherever he's from, take his whole team back there. Whatever meager belongings and checking, God, divvy up the 10%, get everybody handled, now go train for Curtis. I mean, that was a lot. That was a cool move by Sergi. That was a gangster move by Sergi. And I just found out about it today. That's not my fault. I've been in the media every single day. You guys know that. Come and talk to you. I read all the dirt sheets. I tell you about the dot coms. I tell you about the maidens and the elbows and the sure dogs and the junkies. I tell you these things. And I didn't know that happened. I forgot that he's fighting Curtis. And then, and then what would have happened, though? I mean, let's just, let me just give you a different perspective. If one of those pounds or one of those COVID tests or one of those Pico Grands came back and Sergi goes in, what happens to Curtis? Why would Sergi get the nod and not Blades? Blades, who's done everything right. Blades, who's beaten everybody. Blades, who's been around longer. But he didn't speak up and say that. That's not for me to say. That's for him to say. One of the great pieces of media done last week was by Duplices. Duplices, who's a very handsome guy, and he puts on this beautiful suit, and he comes out, and he's representing an entire country of Africa, which he makes perfectly clear, and then he complains that he's stuck on an undercard when a guy in his own weight class is debuting on a main card. He's talking about Bo Nickel. He was pissed. And it was legitimate. It was an excellent argument by him. Nobody was wrong here. Nickel wasn't wrong to take that spot. UFC wasn't wrong to feature a guy that had gotten so many headlines. But Duplices wasn't wrong either, particularly considering he was taking on a perennial number one contender in Derek Brunson. And not for nothing, he had just come off a fight of the night. He should have been pissed. And he should have spoken up. And I will guarantee you, as though I have a big crystal ball, he will be on the main card next time. I didn't hear a word from Curtis Blades. What if they would have put Sergi in? What if they would have put Sergi in and not Curtis? What if they would have taken that fight away? Who would Curtis fight next? And it would be an afterthought anyway. It would be nothing more than an afterthought. Sergi's gone. Throw somebody in. Then you're going to make that a number one contender. It's an afterthought. A blatant afterthought. He didn't say a word about it. He didn't take to the media. I didn't see him in the front row. I didn't see him doing a cameo. I saw the Diaz boys. I saw some guy. Brady used to be quarterback. I saw a guy they called the bus. Sergi Pavlich. One Pico Grant away from possibly being your world champion. Nickname, Cricket.